Good day, fish tankers. Welcome to Drugs on Fish Keeping. Today I'm going to share a principle or a secret with you, but if you can understand this and if you can keep this in mind, it will help you very much in your long-term success in fish keeping. Now I'm making certain assumptions. I'm making the assumption that you know what the nitrogen cycle is, or at the very least, you know how to cycle a tank. You know that you can't just buy a fish tank fill it up, get the equipment going, and the next day go out and buy all the fish you want, put it in the tank, because everything will die. Uh, so you know how to cycle a tank, and you've got, gradually stocked it with your fish, and your fish, uh, your fish tank, your aquarium is going nicely now. And now from here on, it is about avoiding disaster and having long-term success with your fish keeping career. So you maybe get a second tank, a third tank, maybe you breed, maybe you create these wonderful aquascapes, maybe you have a fish room, whatever floats your boat. Now, the most important thing about fish keeping to understand is we are putting living aquatic creatures in glass boxes and creating these artificial ecosystems for them, replicating certain natural principles. And uh, to do that, fish keeping is all about water keeping. And people misunderstand water keeping sometimes. Yes, we've got to know it comes out of our tap, uh, but it's not always about adding chem chemicals and buffering water and reverse osmosis and pH. People overemphasize those kind of things. Most fish, not all, most fish will live in a wide range of pHs and hardnesses. There are uh, quite a lot of exceptions, but in general, that's not the big thing. It's not about keeping the tank spotless. Uh, you can have aquariums that are green or, or, or brown, I'm sure you've, uh, you've, you've maybe snorkeled in a river or in a dam and there's been green water or it's muddy and there's lots of life around. It's not the things you see that usually kill fish, it's the things that you do not see. You can have a green tank and the fish can be fine, it's just not nice to look at, or you can have a tank with crystal clear water and everything dies. Because the thing that, ki that, that kills fish are two things, it's ammonia and nitrite, NO2. Nitrite, nitrate with an A, NO3 is a thing that we remove by water changes and maybe more uh, advanced things like anaerobic and anoxic filtration and plants and so forth. But the thing that kills fish are, are the things you don't see and that's ammonia and nitrite, NO2. Right, now those are the things that kill fish and if you know about running, cycling a tank in a nitrogen cycle, you'll know how do we eliminate these things. We need to have beneficial bacteria in your tank and that is what underlies good water keeping. Fish keeping is about bug keeping. Remember that. Fish keeping is about bug keeping. The bugs being the nitrobacter and nitrosominous beneficial aerobic bacteria that breaks down that ammonia and nitrite before it can poison the fish. So fish, taking, fish keeping is about water keeping, which in turn is about bug keeping. You've got to look after your bugs, which you don't see with your eye, You'll need a microscope to see them, but where are these bugs located, these beneficial uh, groups of bacteria? They are not in the water column. There's a very small trace amount maybe, but that's not where they are. You're not going to cycle a tank by using old water from another tank to put it in. It's not in, in the water column. They attach themselves to surfaces like your hardscape, the leaves of a plant, and especially your substrate. That's why I like a deeper substrate. But the most concentrated groups of these bacteria are going to be sitting on your run-in filters. And that is the main thing. These things, this little sponge filter here, here's a little internal filter. You'll see it's also got a little, two little tiny little sponges in. Let me try and, I don't need to put that back now, the internal filter. Or maybe uh, you've got a big aqua clear like this. Uh, hang on the back filter or a canister filter. You'll see here some sintered glass, biomedia and some sponge in, whereas the other two only have sponge. But these filters, whatever they may be, uh, whether they have sponge or more sophisticated biomedia on them, you've got to treat these filters as if they are alive, because that is your bug keeping. What happened to me as a kid when I started fish keeping uh, they didn't explain it to me in technical terms, but uh, eventually I gave it to a fact that I must leave the tank on its own and wait and wait and wait and then you put the fish in gradually. And, but I didn't know why I did it. And then when my filters 
uh, grew dirty like a sponge filter that's what I had initially like this one a little bit of a different look but same thing I took that sponge out and I washed it in boiling water so it's sparkly clean and I put it back in the tank and guess what happened everything died or most of it died a few hardy fish survived same thing would happen over and over again then you try a box filter then you take out then it works well for a while and it's very dirty and then you take out that dirty uh, filter wool, even though it's mechanical, it develops bacteria, but I didn't know it. I throw it away, fish starts dying again. And when I eventually went to undergravel filters, undergravel filters, you don't change the media because the media is a gravel bed. Suddenly it worked like a bomb and I was a big undergravel filter fan for a while. Still an efficient filter, even though we're out of vogue now. So what was the problem? Every time I either washed the filter out in hot water, or in, uh, uh, in tap water, it might survive just tap water if it's not hot water, it depends on the amount of chlorine you add. Every time I washed the filter out or took this filter and just changed the entire filter or changed the media, I took away the most concentrated bacteria colonies that I had in my tank that was neutralizing the ammonia and the nitrite. Hence I had an ammonia spike and nitrite spike after that and that killed all the fish. So successful fish keeping is about successful water keeping which is about successful bug keeping and your bugs that you want your beneficial bugs not the nasty stuff like ick and some but the, the, the nice and the good bacteria sits on these filters on these sponges on the on the biomedia here and you hang on, hang on that filter so you need to treat this filter as if it is a living thing because it contains a living world on it so every time you clean the filter you take those sponges or you take the biomedia and you wash it out in the old tank water that you take out when you do a water change. Always wash your media in the old tank water and never, ever, ever change all your filter media at once. If, you, if, a, if a sponges are breaking down to such an extent, then change half of it or, or only change uh, the sponge but leave the biomedia. Never change the entire filter uh, group of filter media. You often hear people uh, want to upgrade their filter, they want to have a hang on back, they chuck out uh, the little sponge filter and they put on a brand new hang on back, boom, suddenly the, the fish starts dying and now it's the, the hang on back that's, that's rubbish. No, you took your entire ecosystem of beneficial bacteria, not all of it, but the biggest part of it, and you threw it away and now this filter has to start working again. So that is the lesson, whenever you, ch you, you, you clean a filter, do it in uh, 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 aquarium water, old aquarium water that you take out and never ever change all the media at once. If you change to another filtration system, then run the two systems concurrently or let's say you change one hang on back filter for another, take the media out of a, the old hang on back filter and just put it into the, the new hang on back filter because that thing is living. That media in your filter, whatever media that may be, the sponges or the, or, the, or the scented glass media or your matrix or your lava rock or your pumice or whatever, that contains bacteria and you cannot chuck that away. If you're moving a, a tank from home to home, if you're moving, I've moved tanks successfully like that a number of times with all the fish, set the tank up again on the other side with all the fish in, no problems, but I took that filter and whatever it was, whether it was a canister, I put it in a bucket, I kept it wet. Whether it, if it was a hang on back or sponge filters, I put them in bags with water, just like I would treat fish. You move them over wet and in water, and then you just start them at the other side because your filter contains a living world. And that is something uh, that if you keep that in mind, you're gonna win half the battle. Wash your media in old tank water, Never change the lot at once. I like, I like the idea of having two smaller filters instead of one big filter because then, you know, you, if you, you can always uh, interchange them. If you need to see it in another tank, you take the one filter out, you put it in a new tank, it's instantly running and you add another filter to the old tank, but you already have your run in and mature second filter running there. Then you're just a little bit easy on your feeding for a while. But that way, you never take away that entire bacteria ecosystem on your filter. So that's it, people. If you remember that, take care of your bugs. Good fish keeping is good water keeping, which is bug keeping the bugs that you don't see. And your filter is a living thing and you must treat it as such. Remember that and you're going to have a lot less trouble. 
So that's it. If you found the information useful, please give it a thumbs up. Please uh, give a channel or subscribe. I'll greatly appreciate it. And until we see each other again, please remember to take care of your bugs on the filter and take good care of our domestic denizens of a deep. Goodbye.